is Jeff Bacon with the DIY Writer Podcast. Today we have Lyra Wolf. Lyra is an author of three books in a series that just uh, recently were released. She's a lover of theme parks. Uh, we'll, we'll have to ask her about uh, Frozen Jack and Coke and her particular uh in one of her favorite places to go. Um, she is a world traveler and a very interesting person that we're going to get to know. Lyra, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How about you? You know, I'm a little tired, but I'm okay. Yeah, that's good. Well, yeah, at least you weren't good. like me thinking it was Monday all day. So <laughs> I, you know, I don't get it. It's Friday. How can you think it's Monday? I mean, those two are, are distinctly different in the week. I know like it sucks <laughs> i mean it's like you just went into thursday and decided to skip the weekend and it's monday already i mean that's just that's just true. wrong on so many levels yeah. i i really hate myself if that's just that's just a fact there's probably support groups for that yeah probably i, I need i need to find them <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. lyra um, you've got three books out there, Truth and Other I Lies, do. Chaos Rising, and Lives, Knives, and Apples. What can you uh, tell us about the series? So this is basically a darkly fun high fantasy adventure series inspired by Norse mythology and focuses on everyone's favorite trickster god, Loki. And of course, all of the chaos and destruction that happens in Asgard is in no way his fault, ever. It's always his fault. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, it's just kind of, I've had a lot of fun writing this and uh, trying to answer some of the ineffable questions about Norse mythology, um, namely like, why did Loki, this kind of fun mischievous character, decide to, I don't know, one day just end the world, uh, you know, in fire and brimstone, like that's just an extreme reaction. So that's kind of uh, what I've been trying to discover the answer to with this series. So. Oh. Cool. Yeah. So is it a three book series or do you have more coming? I have a lot more coming. So I imagine it's like, I have this plan to be a six book series, but then with some spinoffs. So I like to have like, I have a prequel trilogy planned as well. And yeah, maybe follow some other of the characters that pop in and out and give them their own book. So. Sure. So yeah. is there a, a, an appearance of Thor? Oh, oh yeah. Oh good. He pops up a lot. I mean, you need someone to like dress up in women's clothing to like destroy a Jotun wedding. Oh, and, like, sure. But yeah, like he's your guy. Like no Absolutely. one's better than him. So, and then just crush some skulls. Like he's a cake. Yeah. Yeah. I'll so no, all of the. Like oh yeah. So yeah. This... So like, like all of the gods kind of make an appearance at some point or another, and is I this... all make their lives miserable. Is this your take on on uh, on uh, that mythology, the Norse mythology, or do you take some uh, uh, liberations with it, or do you stick uh, strictly to the stories? I take my own liberation with it, but yet I try to give a lot of respect and like use the original myths as much as I can. So like, mm -hmm. there's just like a lot of like, again, unexplained things that I try to give an explanation to. And it's been kind of funny how doing that has actually like, it makes sense a little bit. Uh, like for example, all of the gods know that the end of the world is going to come. Like they know their fate but they try to stop Ragnarok. it in the original myths. Yeah, Ragnarok. Um, and so, oh, knowing this, knows that, like, Loki's going to be the cause of it. But yet, in the myths, he still, like, invites him to Asgard and, like, actually makes him his blood brother. That seems like a very interesting and odd thing to do. So, like, why? No one knows why. So, again, I try to find an answer to that, and it just kind of really built this fascinating, like, the, the story, and all of this just kind of grew and, like, yeah, got bigger than I even thought it would. So... Yeah, it's been it's been kind of interesting, actually. Hmm. I'm a big mythology nerd, so yeah. Well, that's really cool. So, does that have anything to uh, do to your upbringing as far as being Swiss? Uh, well, not so much uh, Swiss, but I mean, yeah, I, I always had like a lot of like fairy tales being brought into my life growing sure. up, and and Switzerland, of course, like is basically one big fairy tale village. <laughs> like it's just so cute like no matter where you go <laughs> and uh yeah like I mean literally we went on this hike my husband and I uh and through this forest and like birds will land on your hand and like eat like seeds just yeah. like your snow white they will not also clean your house though that I tried it did not work 
Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, it's just, it's a, it kind of, I think, brought some of that magic to my life, uh, just going there and, you know, spending a lot of time there. Um, yeah. So I, I thought the, uh, <clears throat> the story of uh, you was very interesting. Okay. Uh, born in Indiana, half yes. Swiss, your dad's Swiss, your, your <laughs> husband's Swiss, met him in Indiana, lived in, you know, Vienna, Austria, da, da, da. You, you have to explain this to me again, because I got lost right after <laughs> Indiana to Switzerland. Okay, yeah, so like, basically, backing up, my mom was a dental hygienist and was from Indiana, went to Switzerland, my dad was a patient, and he became her Swiss souvenir. She brought him back to Indiana, which is like everyone's dream to end up in. Right. That's yeah. Indiana went. is the place where, you know, hopefully oh, yeah. I, it's kind of oh, like yeah. Valhalla. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I just remember his horror story is like Indiana in the seventies. They actually microwaved his wine because to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so like that tells you everything about, about that. <laughs> Not only that, it came from a fancy box. Yeah. So that's, yeah, so that's basically how, how I grew up uh, there. And uh, then my parents had friends of friends that knew the Swiss family and their uh, son decided he wanted to have an American adventure. And of course, where'd you go for that? Indiana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that's how I met my husband, uh, actually back when we were 18. Um, so... Yeah, kind of kept up a. And you met him in Indiana. In Indiana, yeah. Right. And at he's, a really he's bad Italian restaurant. From... He's originally from. Uh, it's a town outside of Zurich, Switzerland, and my dad is actually from Basel, Switzerland, and they're actually two boring cities. Like they hate each other, which is like <laughs> also hilarious. Like my husband brags on me all the time. Like he had to end up with a Basel girl, meeting her in Indiana. <laughs> like <laughs> so. That makes family reunions kind of interesting. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the holidays. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. And I always enjoy getting to go and stay with his family. They've accepted me, even though I am this evil Bosler. Uh, but yes, we get to actually stay in his grandfather's 500 year old house, which I swear is haunted. They keep telling me it's not, but like, it is. Like, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. No, no, dear. It's it's not haunted. Who the hell's that? Oh, yeah. never mind him. Yeah. He pops that, that's, in and out. That's that's basically how the conversation goes. <laughs> never mind the ghost in the corner. It's not haunted. Yeah. The the Swiss, as you can imagine, are very imaginative people. I can imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be sure, absolutely. So you've traveled all over the place. You lived in Vienna, Austria I did. for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for about a year. So we went there for my husband's job. Uh, so, you know, as an accountant, so he worked at PwC um, and that was a whole experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I never got to see him. Uh, I got to explore the city and uh, basically spend a lot of time in crypts because I'm that kind of person. Yeah. You know, spending time with the dead is just a fun Tuesday afternoon. You know, and I'm here in Wisconsin, so all I have is cemeteries. I haven't found a crypt yet, but that that actually sounds really cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I mean, so. You, oh yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. Like it's actually a the St. Michael's uh, crypt, um, and it's right by the main palace in Vienna in the city center. And they have some of the only preserved like 18th century mummies, like naturally preserved down there. And like when you go on this tour, you think, oh, it's going to be like behind glass or something. No, you're walking on legit six feet of like crushed bone that they tell you after like you're already walking on it and then the coffins are just like like right there like you're like this far away from like these bodies right okay. <laughs> and like yeah you kind of think like so what killed them is that also still like in the air circling with all these fans that they have blowing around all this like mummy dust like you know just some of the thoughts you have uh, but yeah it's really fascinating like their wigs are still curled they their clothes are just like perfect it's it's really like i really? recommend anyone who ever gets a chance to go to the city like that's a must see so there's i mean their clothing is still perfectly preserved oh, perfect yeah huh. like it's all gray but they said it's actually just the dust that's over them that makes it gray like it would still be just as vibrant if they like yeah. you know clean them off but yeah so do you get to touch them you don't get to touch them unfortunately oh. although someone did steal a shoe off of one of the mummies <laughs> 
Yeah. And I, I, I also have always wanted to like, how do you do that? Like, <laughs> it's like, it's a very small group that's down there. So I was like, wow, kudos to you, like for just desecrating a grave. And that and takes balls. <laughs> so you kind of got to wonder the person that stole the shoe, what the hell do you want it for? Well, that was also my question. Like, like why, like, what are you going to do with it? And like, like just display it in like your curio cabinet. Hey, this is a fun start, like conversation starter. <laughs> Either that or else they're just a really poor thief and they couldn't get both of them. You know, both of them, I can see the one. I just, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like well, that one sock that gets lost in the wash. Exactly. Like it's not worth it unless you can have the complete set. Exactly. You know, you've totally screwed yourself in the black market. Yeah. You should have two. Yeah, exactly. But then, yeah, another funny thing about that is like there were all these wood coffins, but I guess on one tour group, someone from Australia brought this special like worm. I don't know how, they don't know how, but like it's actually like eating the coffins right now. Like they're having like this problem with this. <laughs> like again, this, this place is crazy. Like all the things are happening in this crypt. <laughs> so so somebody brings in a, a a worm that's very special and it's eating the coffins and yeah. they didn't, they have no yeah. idea how. <laughs> they don't. Some dude just walked in. Oh, I got this room in my pocket. Oh, yeah. yeah like, yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's a fascinating place. <laughs> Highly it's, recommend. It would be more interesting as if they had video cameras and this guy like pulls out a, a Ziploc bag of worms and like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I just want to know how this happens. Oh, how do you not know? Yeah. And it's on you? <laughs> like. Well, there's there's another thing you know personal hygiene sometimes is not the best in foreign countries or even yeah, in america yeah. but yeah especially after that like you know that what 20 hour plane trip you know you kind of just yeah. let things go right <laughs> you know you collect all sorts of things like worms and uh, yeah <laughs> and probably just picking through his hair oh shit what's this i'll just throw it in this coffin oh yeah that's basically a trash can so, <laughs> exactly i mean no one's using it anymore <laughs> Well, just that guy and he's dead. He won't care. Yeah. Shit. Oh, I see your chihuahuas popping out. Oh, okay. I see her. Yeah, that's my other weakness or chihuahuas. Our yeah, second guest today is, is uh, actually, I don't have her in my show notes. Yeah, that's another fun fact about me. I'm actually like a third generation chihuahua owner. Somehow that's just a family quirk. So we just a, love them. It's a genetic thing. It, it is. We just love these rats so much. Huh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really cool. My wife one time brought home a dog and said, oh, this is the dog I've always wanted. And I said, oh, cool. What kind is it? It's a lopsal opsal doodle. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Well, it's hypoallergenic and it doesn't really shed. No, it, it sheds. Instead of shedding hair, it shed, sheds these like tumbleweed things that which is preferable. Just, just balls of hair. Oh, well, it's easier to pick up, but. Okay. Yeah. But uh, she is a uh, complete pain in my butt, as all small dogs are. Yeah. 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 This yeah. this one tests you quite a bit. Yeah. I, I like the big dogs better mm -hmm. that just kind of lay on the couch and, you know. Oh, yeah, somebody's coming in the house, going back to sleep. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that was the way, like, my husband actually wanted to get a Newfoundland. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, that's that works well with, you know, a five-pound dog, but they're awesome. Like, I mean, they're just, like, really a loving family pet, the, the Newfoundlands, so yeah, maybe I mean, one day. But... An Irish wolfhound would be, you know, something that'd be like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely a big dog. They're a lap dog. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> kind of crush your lap maybe in the process but <laughs> it's just more to love <laughs> it's just more to love yeah absolutely so you are uh you moved into orlando yeah. just in time for the quarantines and yes. you've been trapped in your house haven't met anybody but you do so love um theme parks i do love theme parks because again my husband is lucky enough to work at universal Mm -hmm. So that comes with certain benefits. So I tend to go there quite often. Um, <laughs> and I do love to live dangerously. And I, I do recommend also getting the frozen Jack and Coke that they have at Universal. Yeah. And then going on the mummy, which is like the best roller coaster that also happens to be in the dark. So like, you just don't know what's going on. Like you're just screaming yeah. the whole time. Well, that's <laughs> completely cool. 
I, I haven't been down to Florida in, in years, but. Hey, you should come down. It's, it's fun when yeah. it's not, you know, full of COVID. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of puts but, a damper on the fun. Yeah. But my understanding is the parks are open, so they must they, be, they are open. They must be doing something halfway decent or just being reckless, one of the two. I mean, who knows? <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to say. But once the final numbers come in, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Right. Ish. But yeah, I'm a big I didn't realize I was such a theme park person until I moved here, but I, I've been really enjoying it. So so would you say the Frozen Jack and Coke actually makes uh, makes Universal the best theme park or? It does. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't beat that. And it just makes your whole day and everything better, like when you're there. So, so Disney needs to step up. They do need to step up. I mean, they do have uh, this pineapple whip with rum, but I don't know. I just... Jack just always wins. Sorry. Jack wins. Okay. It does. <laughs> I personally think Jose beats Jack, but you know. <clears throat> uh, it's a tight race. Like <laughs> it's a tight race, you know. Yeah. yeah but yeah, I've, it's been fun uh, moving here. Just realizing like, it, I, I also didn't realize that like, there's just this own culture here and like, yeah, theme parks are life and people do have their favorites that you have like, you're basically your theme park outfits. Like it's its own fashion. Um, actually between Universal and Disney um people I don't know if you've heard the term like Disney bound so like you're not allowed to dress up as a character so like they kind of like they still do but like where it's not obvious so like if you want to go as Ariel you might like wear like a purple shirt and green pants like that's how really do it. It, yeah it's a whole thing like <laughs> okay yeah, the other fun thing with Disney is uh, to not get run over by like you know baby carriages. Sure. I remember everywhere. that last time I was there. Yeah. Yeah, it's still the same. Still <laughs> Another the same. benefit of Universal, they don't have that. You don't have that, okay? <laughs> so they do the same thing in Universal. Do they dress up as their favorite characters? Do you see Batman running around or something? Or uh, no, there it's also you're not allowed to dress up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Uh, I guess they're afraid that like, you know, people might like think that they're a cast member or crew, you know, team member oh. and yeah. yeah. So, which is that like at Halloween, uh, that's like a big thing too. And so usually you can only wear like themed t-shirts, but that works. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> t-shirts are a big deal. <laughs> t-shirts are a big deal. Okay. Oh, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you get your Iron Mans or whatever, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's... yeah, you see whole families of just like Captain Americas, mm -hmm. but then I of course have to wear like my Loki shirt, and if so, it's always a little bit awkward when we're standing next to each other in line. Oh sure, yeah, that's but... confrontation. <laughs> Conf oh yeah, confrontation. You just you feel the tension immediately. Absolutely, absolutely, because <laughs> Loki and Thor. Now getting kind of back to Norse mythology. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, the one thing that always kind of interests me and, and you brought it up when you're talking about your book is that Loki has never, you know, Loki has always been, especially like in the comic books, you know, the, the trickster, the problem maker, you know, everything else, but North mythology kind of has a, a little bit different take on Loki. I mean, when you actually read the actual mythology, I mean, he is a pain in the ass, but every, every it seems like everything that he does and when he gets caught, it's like, okay, you need to fix this. The end result is there's always some benefit to the gods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, which I, I always thought was kind of interesting. How do you attack that in your book attack? How do you, how do you address <laughs> that in your book? Well, I actually try to show that on purpose because that is like, what's also fascinating about, like you said, the difference between Marvel Loki and like myth Loki. Um, and that's just, what like a, a trickster god is you know and it, it's it's change and potential so like yeah you have to sometimes destroy with chaos to have the benefit of something better right right yeah and so it's funny sometimes to see how like this will naturally occur in like my plots that i don't even anticipate like he'll just like make all these mistakes but then the end it actually makes something better mm -hmm. um so i do but like I did have the intention to try to show that because I think that's just really important to show that distinction between like Marvel and what the real myths are. Cause that's just a really fascinating, like 
like concept with 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 that Loki. It really is because when you look at the North mythology, you know, Loki is very smart and cunning. Yeah. And then he always gets himself stuck in a pickle. I mean, he just, you know, and like, okay, now I have to get myself out of this because he, he, you know, offers something that, you know, <clears throat> oh yeah, absolutely. I'll give you my head. If you, yeah. <laughs> you know, that. Just that. <laughs> Small was, token. Uh, you know, was it the six gifts to the gods? Or yeah. Something? Like, yeah, Molnir and yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, he's got the, uh, yeah, he's got the dwarfs fighting against each other, trying yeah. to get three gifts apiece and, you know, mm -hmm. that whole thing. I thought that was really interesting. And then all of a sudden, you know, the guy he, or the group that he doesn't want to win, they win. And it's like, okay, I want your head. Oh. No, no. no, can't do it. No, because you did not say anything about the neck. You can't, can't cut that. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, I love those, like, just word games and things like you just don't expect. Um and also, again, like, it started with him cutting Sif's hair, like, Thor's wife. Like, yeah. just for the lulls, like, yeah, I'm just going to do that. But again, it starts with destruction and chaos, and then all of a sudden you get, like, basically these amazing weapons that protect the gods from, like, the giants. Yeah. I don't remember exactly why he cut her hair. He just kind of did it to be an asshole, didn't he? Yeah. Basically. We, we don't know. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, for the lulls to be it, like, yeah, just be a dick, because, like, that's basically what he is like 90 percent of the time right <laughs> you know of course if if you're not the strongest god you absolutely want to pick on thor because you know he won't just kill you <sighs> i mean you know just it's like really i know this was like come on man like not why? A thunder and lightning yeah i think i'll go ahead and shave his wife's head that yeah <laughs> that's great you know it's almost like a drunken you know frat party or something like that i mean it just it, oh yeah you know, I'm like, that's reason, why, you're like oh yeah ass. i know i like and that's what i love about norse mythology it's just it's it's like dark but yet fun and like there's yeah. this violence but i don't know it's you can just see like these vikings like basically having a dark winter's night and just like being drunk off their asses and just like you know telling these stories about thor in a dress running dress or like loki cutting off his hair like just for the lulls like mm. yeah well, it's and we don't know how how these things how these works were produced. We really oh, yeah. don't. We don't. And and we assume that it's uh, you know a fire, somebody sitting around there coming up with a mm -hmm. very imaginative story and lots of mead. You know, I, I feel like uh, mead was very uh, made a big impact on these stories sometimes. <laughs> so one thing that I did because uh -huh. I I mean I I kind of get into North mythology too. Okay. But uh, have you tried mead? I have. I I went and I bought like four bottles of it. Just to, okay, you know, here's this one, this one, mm -hmm. this one, you know, and whatever. And it's like this is really the nectar of gods. It's it's kind of sweet and you know, yeah. I typically like my tequila mm -hmm. and uh, whiskey and rum. But mm -hmm. you know, I kind of got a soft spot for mead. I yeah. I, uh, it's, you know, it's pretty good. It, it really is. And then I started looking up how to make your own mead, and I'm like, oh yeah, this looks good. Oh yeah, and like it's scarily easy. <laughs> it, it really is. You know, it's like basically, it's, like what, like honey and water, and like you know, some yeast starter or whatever. You know, it's just yeah. like mead. Yep. mead. Throw some oranges in there. <laughs> well, it, there it's it's funny how prevalent that that drink is throughout mythology. You know, and yeah, and they you know you have ale and you have mead you yeah. know and those two kind of it depends on what what uh what you're looking at but mm -hmm. uh, um you know in yeah. the amount of ale that the gods drink you know it has to be reflective of the amount of ale that the uh, vikings drunk drink mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. realistically yeah um <laughs> well, again that when you couldn't drink water <laughs> might as well make me some mead yeah <laughs> That was interesting. You actually, like, I did a lot of research with, with me because I just got curious about it. And, like, I didn't realize it was, like, one of, like, the most, like, ancient of drinks. Yeah. So, which was just fascinating to me. Like, it was, I think, actually one of the first wines, like, so. I'm not sure if that's correct, but that's what I remember reading, so. Would you describe it as a wine? I mean. That's what I, I wouldn't, but, like, that's what I keep hearing people, like, refer to it as, like, a honey wine. But, like. I don't I don't I I don't I, I can't put it in the same classification as wine or anything like I that it, it's kind of it it's in my mind thing. It, yeah it's kind of on its own yeah it really is 
So anybody who happens to be listening to this, go out and buy a bottle of meat and try it. Start with the sweet and then go to the dry. But, yeah. Uh, you know. I mean, I, I love how Facebook now advertises to me mead. Like it, it's finally learned a lot about me. Cause like, as also a writer, like Facebook, like is very confused. I get ads for everything because of what yeah. I have to research. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. you might have the same problem. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but like I, I has learned, I like mead uh, and I'm, I'm happy about that. <laughs> what I find funny is uh, I get author ads. So everybody's trying mm -hmm. to sell me their program on being, you know, the next James Patterson, yeah. of course. Yeah, and always James get, Patterson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I get, uh, you know, do you want to write like Stephen King? No, not really. I want to write like Jeff Bacon, but whatever. <laughs> um, maybe not. I don't know. Um, the uh, other thing would be, uh, since I started a podcast, uh, Facebook was listening in and I get uh, a gajillion of those on top of the election ads, on top of the writing ads, on top of the advertising ads, on top of, you know, it's just like, holy crap, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm getting a lot of uh, beard oil and beard soap, special underwear for men. Oh. It seems to think I am a man. It's, it's, it's made an interesting choice. Well, based on your search history <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we don't judge on this podcast. So whatever you, uh, you want to do, you know, so it's fine. I mean, again, lo looking up about hairy Vikings, it, it makes sense. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe the algorithm's a little bit off, but it's hey, a little bit off. <laughs> maybe you're shopping for your favorite Viking. Yes. No. Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the one thing that I think is really funny is uh, in being an author and talking about Facebook ads is the amount of crap that's out there. I, yes. You know, everybody's got their, their program on, you know, I wrote and I make a million dollars and, you know, or uh, get yeah. 10,000 readers in five minutes, you know, I mean, that I, works so well. <laughs> yeah. You know, that that's really the way it works. Hard work has nothing to do with it. Just buy this program for $2,500 and I will teach you how to, mm -hmm. and you don't even have to write. No, that, that was one. It of writes the itself. Yeah. It writes Instant itself. author, instant yeah. bestseller. Yeah. And uh, I, there's one that I clicked on that I thought was funny. Um, just because our presentation was was so off the wall, but it did say that you know you don't have to write, you don't have to know how to write, you don't have to do this, you know, da, 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 da. and you can be an award winning author in sixty days. And I'm like, how does this work? So you know, you click on it, and of course you get five thousand more. Uh, oh yeah, clicked on somebody else's. What, what award are you going to win? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, you probably but their participation trophy. Yeah. So this whole package, you have a ghostwriter and it was expensive, but they have a ghostwriter write your uh, novel for you. You just come up with an idea and they'll just write the novel for you. And then uh, um, you buy the next package, which is the advertising package. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, of course it's fully edited and everything else. They will create your webpage for you. They'll do this. They'll do that. So basically, you know, Bobby's sitting there living in the basement of, uh, <clears throat> um, of his mom's house can uh, pay you know twenty thousand dollars and become an award-winning uh, best-selling author in sixty days. And it's like wow, that, that's 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 going to work out so well. I I'm sure for a slight fee, just a slight one. So, well, you know, people must be buying it because they're advertising. Oh, it's yeah. not like Facebook ads are cheap. No, I mean, they they're kind not. Of are, but I mean, you know, <clears throat> um, yeah, comparatively, but you know, it's just like holy crap. But you know. Or yeah. uh, the struggling authors that, uh, you know, I'm a publisher. I'd like to publish your book for you. Just pay me $10,000 and I'll go ahead and throw it out there. It's like, uh, what? Really? Oh, yeah. There, there are so many like that. And, like, it yeah. infuriates me. <laughs> it does me, too. Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing that pisses me off is the, uh, the people that, uh, um, you know, for $60, I'll promote you to my Facebook groups, my Twitter feeds, my da 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 da, yeah. da, da, da for one week, and you'll see a tremendous boost, you know, and they could be promoting you to, you know, your uh, fantasy theory uh, series to, um, I don't know, nonfiction readers, you know, yeah. I mean, just mm -hmm. totally out of genre, totally yeah. out of, you know, not even fantasy readers. Yeah. 
you know, people that would probably never pick up your book and mm -hmm. say, oh, we did a good job. Did you see a bump in sales? Oh, yeah. Nope, nope. Didn't. <laughs> well, that's okay, Pini, anyway. And then yeah, or, three days. Or they, yeah, or they give it to like the people that do pick it up or like the people that one, one star it because I didn't realize this fantasy book was, you know, not a nonfiction book about airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to go for personal growth, growth, and uh, and uh, be a healthier person. And uh, I got to tell you, these phase have nothing to do with it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I love those. But <laughs> yeah, he actually, I'm, I'm a part of an anthology that mm -hmm. that uh, put out a, um, a a bunch of short stories under the uh, um, the title "Winds of Winter." Okay. This was way before Martin oh. decided he was going to name his book. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but uh, you know he can do whatever the hell he wants, and it's like, mm. should we change our title? No, no, that's probably a good no, title. Tag. Whatever. So then we got this one review from this this douchebag that uh, um, one star that said, "I bought the wrong book." How the hell is that our fault? And you one star me because you bought the wrong book. I'm gonna one star you for not reading. I know. Oh my gosh, I got some like that. Like I have an audio book with another pen name I do with dark fairy tales and like oh my gosh he said this did not play back like i couldn't hear it one star it's like that sounds like a, yeah it sounds like that's a you problem not like a me problem like they couldn't figure out how to make it play on like their phone or whatever and my iphone sucks so <laughs> one star you okay yeah, and, then they, and then they bought the second book and did the same thing they said i thought we would work with this one but it also was the same problem one star <laughs> Mean, well, that's just, when you reply back and say, well, buy the next one and we'll see how this one works. I think this one's better. Yeah. <laughs> it should work on your flip phone. Yeah. So I, I, I just have no words. Like, I mean, I sometimes like love them, but also like hate them. At the same yeah. Time. <laughs> I, I, I think the uh, people that review books, I think the uh, go-to uh, uh, bad comment is you desperately need an editor when they have nothing else to say. I think that's what oh, yeah. they say. And that, you know, they don't realize it's been edited three times and it's been, you know, yeah. da, 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 da. and like, it's not, you know, the, the process is, you know, proofreading, editing, editing, mm -hmm. and yeah. put it out to the beta readers. And by the time yeah. it's been put out, I, you know, not everybody's process is like that, but uh, yeah. you know, it's been read by, you know, 15, 20 people. And it's like, yeah, okay. It's, it's probably not perfect. There's always something that gets screwed up that, you know, nobody yeah. catches. Yeah, it's just whatever. I mean, if you try any anything, like that's just what happens with books. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, and um, <clears throat> the one star, yeah, like, uh, well, you know, there's a misspelled word on page two hundred and seventy three. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Yeah. yeah, obviously that destroys the whole book right there. <clears throat> like right there, yeah. The story yeah. is just shot at that point. I've read, yeah. you know, <laughs> I've read ninety percent of it and. It was just so jarring to the reader. I hear that all the time too. Yeah. You know, from yeah. Office. That's a favorite word, jarring. Jarring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. DNF. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wasn't for me. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know what? As a dark fantasy writer, if I don't jar the shit out of you, then I didn't do my job. Oh my God. And like, that's the problem like, with my one dark fantasy series. Like, I'll get a couple of romance people, and like, it's a dark fantasy, it's not a romance. And so, they leave their opinions about the ending and it's like yeah <laughs> that's because it's not a romance book <laughs> there's no hea here well you know <laughs> I, i've grown to hate that word <laughs> like it's like a trigger word for me it's a trigger word <laughs> AGA. <laughs> like one person even gave a warning like it's a ruffle still skin like retelling like so you know it's like the miller's daughter and the king yeah. and you know they gave a warning because there was like an old man in this book. They were. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like a warning. Like there was an old man, like yeah, with with in the book because like you know she has to bury this king, but he was like in his forties, so I had to laugh at that. <laughs> but like I never knew that was like a problem or like something That's to warn people about. <laughs> like I learned something that day. <laughs> so that that was probably my favorite Goodreads review, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Just like. Like, come on, like. 
it's just kind of interesting what people get upset about or like you know oh, focus on you know people get upset about all sorts of things and i'm sure mm-hmm. it usually has nothing to do with the actual book they read it's just that they happen to be pissed off that day when they woke up and finished the book or well, I, yeah. you know, who knows i mean you know god bless them for putting a review oh yeah exactly yeah actually taking the time but some oh, yeah. of the comments are just like you know <laughs> seriously where did you get that i had i had one person i got their review removed because they reviewed the wrong story on mine oh no yeah oh, i've like, heard of that happening <laughs> that's like, the hell there's there's no dragons in this book you know and not that well, are you that. sure maybe maybe there were <laughs> i am you know i don't really track what the editor did i guess but you know <clears throat> after writing it over a couple of times i'm pretty damn sure there wasn't a dragon in it and that's, that's the thing with dragons how so. unrealistic the dragon yeah. was and i'm like <laughs> well that's the thing with dragons you never know when they will appear <laughs> yeah it was, it was the first time that i got amazon going yeah okay that's good yeah. like that's actually a, a great victory because like they do not remove reviews <laughs> no they don't but you know and they contact I, i'm not sure if they removed it or the the person that wrote it removed it but i'm like yeah. this this has nothing to do with this yeah. book yeah well sir you know we really can't get, no i'm serious this is not my book you know everything that yeah. she says even the main character is wrong everything's wrong i think she copied and pasted this into the wrong damn book yeah you know it was just so apparent and it's like i'm not going to take credit nor abuse for somebody else's book if they want to yeah. criticize me in my book yeah go ahead yeah yeah exactly go ahead that's what the game is but you know whatever but i just thought that was funny that is really funny so let's talk about you okay all right so you've got this trilogy out you love theme parks and frozen jack and cokes which yes. you know i'm not exactly sure how you freeze that and make that but it sounds delicious um it is <laughs> And we talked about a little bit about being a childless millennial in Florida, for God's sake. <laughs> yes, the greatest of sins. The greatest of sins. Holy. Yeah. Oh. How dare you? Oh, oh yeah. I mean. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Yeah, there's like a, there's a special Disney Facebook group. I will not name names, but they go on rants often about childless millennials and <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> like they actually wanted to uh, ban childless millennials from entering disney like you could like you could look that up that was a legit like blog that happened and like it exploded over the internet <laughs> no kidding seriously yeah. oh for real like yeah, if you type in like childless millennial disney like i'm sure it will pop up like it's real it was horrifying and hilarious i laughed a lot <laughs> <laughs> like i enjoy knowing that i can destroy oh, someone's day just by existing in, in the theme park like <laughs> there's nothing better some people just need to get a hobby or something or get over themselves or good lord oh they do yeah like she complained that you know the childless millennials were like like taking up space in line to like you know have a picture of the character they were like taking the last soft pretzel that their five-year-old could not have like you know terrible things just awful holy cow All real. you should you should really <laughs> rethink your life choices Good Lord. Yeah. I mean, that really, I don't understand. How do, like, how do they, how do they control that? You know, if they were, in, you know, have a big sign up front, childless millennials are not welcome. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a universal where they have actually, uh, you know, Jack and Cokes. Yeah. Yeah. Like all the alcohol. Like, yeah. Well, that'd be universal to have a big sign. We love you childless millennials. Yeah. Come on in. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that is the difference between the two parks. Like universal is kind of like the bad boy theme park. <laughs> Like their their Halloween facility, for example, is like to go to these haunted houses and be drunk as you go through them. Disney, it's fun, but like it's a lot of, you know, getting candy and fun parades. But just yeah. it's fun, but just different different things depending on yeah. what you like. <laughs> so you know, can you imagine a cast member at uh, Disney? You know, just oh, yeah, I just, just feel just bad for them. This, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, they sometimes will post on this Facebook group like the secrets and like. Oh, I, I just, I feel for them. Like my heart goes out to all of them. Like oh. any cast members watching, like, I feel you. Like I feel your pain. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they have to walk around with a smile on their face. Number one, number two, um, mm-hmm. there are uh, uh, a plethora of assholes that go to these parks. Oh yeah. That, oh you know, yeah. I mean, just, I, 
I have horror stories. I mean, there are people that like, they will have fist fights at the parks. Like, I mean, I don't know, people know that like it happens almost every day. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> like they have to call security because people will legit like, especially like during Christmas and spring break when it's like the busiest. And also, yeah, Christmas is the busiest time of year, FYI. Okay. I thought it would not be, but it's actually the busiest time for both parks. Fist fights every day because kidding. people get upset about people cutting cutting in line or whatever like yeah like you're just sitting there having a good time singing it's a small world after all and uh then yeah. all of a sudden somebody comes up and clocks you it, it, it it's real that's what happens like it's, real. it's a real problem <laughs> it is so yeah who knew it was such a violent place <laughs> they're just yeah yeah and then you got goofy and mickey mouse over there trying to break it up yeah yeah <laughs> The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to do it where the princesses are because I hear those guys are really mean. They will throw you down and take your oh, ass out right oh, now. Oh, they will. Oh, yeah. Don't cross them. Don't cross the princesses no. at all. They have those high heels. Like, that'll go right through your eye socket. Yeah, they just, they're <laughs> violent. There are, there are so many deaths caused by princesses every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. <clears throat> they, I'm uh, glad you could give that warning to the people. Well, you that know. That was an important I, message. It really is. It's a PSA. You know, yeah. Public service announcement. Don't fuck with the princesses. No. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to cover? I mean, we've gone I, from your books to frozen, you know, frozen uh, alcoholic drinks for adults to childless millennials <laughs> and also across the, the pond of Vienna, Austria. Yeah. I mean, I think we kind of covered a lot. <laughs> we, we covered a lot. Okay. Oh, who knew I was so interesting? <laughs> well, I did. It's just, uh, yeah. you know, just a matter of uh, <laughs> bringing it to light and letting everybody know what a wonderful person Laura, Lyra Wolf is. Oh. Laura, Lyra. Oh, <laughs> God. I hope somebody edits that out. I don't want to sound like too big of an idiot. Chris, I, I'm used to it. Like I said, with my, <laughs> like, this is my pen name because my real name, get it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just so everybody knows, <clears throat> this is not really Lyra Wolf. This is gonna be <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. Yeah, yeah, scared you for a minute. Anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all righty. Well, um, is there anything else you want to talk about? Come on, I'm gonna put you in the spot. Sure. What do you want? What do you want? Come on, what do you want to talk about? Oh my gosh. Like, can we talk about how much junk food like I'm eating now? <laughs> No, but that sounds <laughs> interesting. Let's go ahead and go into that topic. Oh, yeah. Like, favorite junk food. The, yeah. Uh, Cheetos puffs. Like, I will eat the whole bag. It's my, like, I, I just can't get enough of it. And the puffs, though. The, the puffs. Yes. The puffs, not the not Cheetos. No. Cheeto puffs. Okay. Specifically the puffs. I know okay. I'm a monster. I, I get that. Like, <laughs> like I said, we don't judge here. Don't <laughs> but, judge. like, today was the first day I actually put on real clothes since March and like, I just noticed things aren't fitting like they used to. <laughs> so, <laughs> the puffs betrayed me, but like also I just like, it's what happens, but it was worth it. It's well, you know, that's, it. that's one of the nice things about the, uh, the pandemic and the uh, quarantines is that we found new and, and very efficient ways of getting our junk food to us. We have, yeah. <laughs> I know I have, <laughs> it's called Walmart delivery. <laughs> yeah, <very> convenient. exactly. <laughs> Too convenient. They also deliver alcohol. Which has also been a nice uh, perk. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, you don't even have to leave your house. You can just, yeah. you know, ding dong, here it is on and, your doorstep. And yeah, and see, I didn't realize that's another perk in Florida. They deliver that. I guess in Indiana, sorry, friends who still live there, like they don't. <laughs> I heard so. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Indiana is so progressive. <laughs> <laughs> I think they still think it's 1863 <laughs> sometimes. They still have, with their like with their laws and just how like it's it's an interesting place. I mean, uh, it's always going to be my home, but yeah, <laughs> they have some funny laws with that. Do they still close things down on Sunday or? Do oh, they, yeah. yeah. Like I think they just now allowed alcohol sales on Sunday, but like my whole life, like you could not buy it on Sunday anywhere except yeah. the restaurants. It yeah. like closes down like ten o'clock on Saturday night and doesn't open up until Monday afternoon sometime. Yeah, and then the bars. I, I don't know about where you were, but when I was growing up, the bars it was a big point of contention because they're open till two on Saturdays, but mm -hmm. they could not be open on Sundays. Yeah. You know, but uh, thank God that's over. Well, not for Indiana, at least. <laughs> no. <laughs> but now you're always, in the... 
I was oh, saying it's always fun to rag on your home state. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny what we're ragging on. Oh my God, they didn't, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they didn't sell alcohol on Sundays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we just stocked up on Saturdays. It wasn't that tough of a problem, but it's like, oh my God, it's so inconvenient. It's actually more convenient to, to order more alcohol than you need. Yeah. And then you don't have to go to the store and waste that time on Saturday. And unless, of course, yeah. you know, you drink it all the night before, I guess. I don't know, whatever. But <laughs> well, again, try to be a Viking. See how much you can get through. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds great. Or just live like anyone from history. Like, I mean, I swear they were just drunk all the time. They had to be. <laughs> they had to be. Yeah. Like, that's like, I love watching food documentaries, like, in, from history. Like, that's mm -hmm. another, like, weakness of mine. Like, it's just fun like to see like oh small beer for breakfast big beer for lunch bigger beer like for dinner oh and wine and like a dessert wine and yeah yeah and you know the nice thing about it is that uh especially with beer there's a lot of protein in it mm -hmm. and carbohydrates but um you know it's it's a nice way to start the day evidently uh, yeah, I prefer evidently. coffee, but you know, I I could probably <laughs> switch to beer. Did you uh did you read oh god, when was it? Was it last year or was it this? Yeah, I think it was last year. There's this guy that went on a beer diet for uh for Lent. So 40 <sighs> days of uh the only thing that he did was he drank like stouts and oh you know, really rich beers. He lost like 45 pounds or something <laughs> like that on a beer diet. See, that's how you do Lent effectively. <laughs> See, that's how you do Lent. That's how you get through lent <laughs> uh, is go on the beer diet oh my gosh <laughs> i tried to promote that throughout our house and i got shot down immediately which i thought was you know I, I, that's unfair <laughs> it really is you know if you're gonna experiment you should be allowed to experiment you should be especially in your own home right you know <laughs> but uh it was funny because they made uh he talked to his boss about it Mm -hmm. he said okay this is what i'm gonna do so my lunches you know when i come into the parking lot i'm gonna like drink two beers come to work <laughs> then my lunches i'm gonna have two more beers you know in you know the the article on it you can look it up on the internet yeah it was hilarious because you know he's actually getting his work to allow him to come in to work after he's had a couple beers in the parking lot he has to go back out to the parking lot for his lunch which is a couple more beers and then he drives home and then he has two beers for supper and then a beer for uh, a uh, bedtime snack. And it's like, seriously, oh this is, this is like the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. So, you know, sir, I'm really worried about my health. And so I want to go on the specialized diet. Do you support me? Yes. Okay. Well, it's the beer diet. Oh, okay. Tell me more. You know, and, and they let him oh. do it. Oh my gosh. Well, apparently I heard Guinness has a lot of nutrients in it. Absolutely. <laughs> but <laughs> Guinness not sure enough to sustain you. <laughs> Guinness is, is a part of my life. And oh. I, I can tell you what, uh, doing without it is very hard. It is, yeah. <laughs> it is, it's, it's a trial. But Alrighty. Well, I think that we're probably at a point to where we can wrap this up. Unless of course you have more pearls of wisdom for me. I think I'm out of pearls. You're out of pearls right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. Well, if you love North mythology, I uh, suggest that you guys pick up all of the books, truth and other lies, chaos, rising lies, knives, and apples. From Lyra Wolf. You can find her on Amazon and you can also fire at, find her at, um, lyrawolf.com that's l-y-r-a wolf.com i'd like to yep. thank you all for listening this is jeff bacon with a diy writer podcast and i truly suggest everybody go out and buy two bottles of mead right now and try it it's beautiful it is i agree <laughs> <laughs> all right i hope you all have a wonderful day thanks <laughs> bye-bye <laughs>